We're all the way in Brooklyn, New York right now. We just pulled up to Hello Beautiful Salon, Rebecca Faye, hairstylist, someone that has done hair for many people in the industry. But one person in particular, someone that has the rainbow hair that everyone sees, but no one ever thought about who did 6 ix hair. Let's talk to Rebecca Faye. What made you bring this all to life? Because this is, this is different. I've been to a lot of salons, Rebecca. This is different. <laughs> That's the point. Um, basically, I just try to make it eclectic and fun and just so it's like homey and, you know, people, basically any stretch, any person can come in and feel comfortable with saying, like, I want to be this or I want to yeah. be that, you know. We transform men to women, women to men, mm. uh, you know. We make people just have full transformations and, you know, kind of get out of their system what no other salon can get you know create for them so and it's it's so dope that you understand on how important hair is to someone they can really fr bring their confidence and their happiness from a, a one to a, to a ten, ten right just off of getting a haircut or getting some body as we're getting that six one one which we gotta figure out what that is called <laughs> two can if you're watching this i need you to figure it let me know what what six one what is six one one heck is six one one but yeah, that's just super important to you. How important is hair? Because I know you said originally you were never, you weren't into hair. You were into modeling. Yeah, I mean. You were a dancer as well. Right. Yeah, I was a dancer and a model. And then that's how I came to New York. And then from there, it was more because I was like having it done to me so much for yeah. so long that I thought, you know, I needed a change. And that would be a good, you know, uh, spin off that I was, you know, so involved with the backstage life and all the, you know, getting it done and the production of it that I thought, you know, I'd be good at it, yeah. I, you know. So I just, I went to beauty school and then I, I started from there, I, I went, came back to New York and started working for Patricia Field, which is you know, a world famous stylist. And yeah, she's, she's, she's the sure. funkiest of the, the, you know. The funkiest of the funk. Yes, yeah, she is. She's the mother. The mothership. Yeah, I love your accent, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah. I love your accent. Is this such a New Yorker accent? Are you Are you from Brooklyn originally? No, I really, I, I mean, I, I've been here so much, so much longer than anywhere else. That kind of technically, yeah. yeah. But uh, originally, originally, I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, that's what it is. A Boston so accent. Like a, no, I don't really have a Boston accent. Is I don't. It's like maybe a tinge twist of the two. Between the two. You know, but I, I was never allowed to have a Boston accent. <laughs> My father was like, eh, you pronounce your eyes. You know, me and you were talking off air about some notable people that you've done hair for. I know you were saying that you, did, you have, that you have you've had clients with, like, boxers and yeah, things yeah, in that. She, yeah, she's a Oh, that's the boxer. boxer right oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm talking at third person like she's yeah, not no, here. She's big time. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Who are some notable people that you, that you can name? That I can name that, that I've you done. can that you can tell people that you've done their hair. Uh, I mean, how far do you want me to go back? Let's let's go <laughs> let's go far back because I I know I, the, we all we all know the six nine one, but we'll get right. to that in a second. Right, right. I, I want to know the other ones that you've done. Okay. Um, well, back in the day, like long, long at Pat Field's time, I got to work on Madonna. I got to work on Marilyn Manson. I got to work on Stevie Wonder. These are heavy names. <laughs> what, what, what were you doing exactly to um, to some of these people that you're named? For just like Madonna and Marilyn Manson, I got to do in like some just like extension pieces just for yeah. like a thing they were going to. Any balayage? Um, no, I was. Sounds like I, I know what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, they didn't even balayage here back then. It wasn't a thing then in the in the in the, in the early nineties, but. Um, uh, for them, I just got, you know, because I was working for Pat and every yeah. celebrity in the world came there to get ready, you know, so it put me in the right zone, you know, for that. And then uh, for Stevie Wonder, I did just like, I tightened his dreads and got yeah. to just like kind of beat his face a little and wow. that was incredible. I think he's actually, out of everyone I've ever worked on, he's the only person I shed a tear when he walked in the room, like my oh, eyes wow. just like watered. That's amazing. And it's a good thing he was blind, because I would have been embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he felt the excitement, probably. He did. He was That's really it. funny. He I remember when he saw me, his brother said, Ooh, Stevie, you got to see who's doing your hair. And he took off his glasses, 
was like, damn, baby, you look no, good. No, nah. He said that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then he was just really funny. He got like, hit on by Stevie Wonder. I mean, I don't know if he was hitting on me or just that he way, was, you know. Nice and then he was guy. like, come on, sit in my lap, baby girl. I'm going to sing you a song. And then he, like, just made up a little tune, and I thought it was going to die. He hit you with the sweetie did in the Yeah, he did. That's awesome. So, yeah, that was fun. And, you know. So you've been doing this. You've been, you've been at it I've, for a while. I've been at this, yeah. You've been yeah. super creative. Mm-hmm. And I know the fir- literally the first person that you mentioned when I came in. And you did, on a first name basis, you said, you said that you've done work for 6 9 yeah, yeah. But you said Danny to me. <laughs> so the, I'm assuming that you've known him before 6 9 was yeah. even a well, thing. Yeah, well, when, when I met him, I started doing his hair when he was 16. And uh, he still, he started, he was going by 6 9 but I guess I just called him Danny because that's how I know. Uh, you know him, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, when you do something, when you're personal with somebody, like, you don't call them by their stage name right. if they have a real name. So I guess I'm just more used to that. But yeah, he was just trying to come up, and we had little, like, he would give me these cool ideas and ask me if I could do it. I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that's how it started. And then there was just, you know, half time, you know, he was trying to make his way up the yeah. ladder. And then one time he just came and said, can you do this rainbow hair? I want to have it exactly. So it was his idea. Yeah, it was his oh, idea. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Whose idea was it? It was his idea hair? that he wanted to, it, every time he came, he had an idea. He had a specific, he's a Taurus. He had, yeah. He's an artist. He's a, a visionary. And I am as well. I mean, naturally, if he said do whatever you want, I would, you know, yeah. do that too. But with him, he always knew what he wanted, and that was what was cool about it, you know. And he was one time he said, "Just can you do like rain, straight up rainbow?" And I was like, "Yeah." What's your favorite look that you've done for him? I think it, could, it, it, it probably is the rainbow one. But we've done we've done a bunch of cool. I mean, we've done a bunch of cool ones over the time. But I do think the rainbow one. That that one's such a staple because whenever you think of the current state of music, people are always doing colorful dreads. Right. But he came in with the the colorful, just like the most colorful. The yeah. most absolute colorful, and it's crazy because when you come in here, it's like you guys embellish colorful, vibrant yeah. colors. Yeah. And everything. What is your favorite color? Not to get sidetracked. I don't know. I don't but, think I have a black. Black. <laughs> and whenever from like the outside looking in, because obviously we, uh, the, the audience, we don't know Six Nine personally. You know Danny. Uh, you don't uh, know Six Nine. You know Danny. Well, I, I know them both. Oh, well, you know them both, but you <laughs> yeah. know him on on a personal basis. Like, how was he before the fame? When 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 it came to you sitting in, when he was sitting in your chair. This is an intimate yeah, thing. Yeah, the same. I mean, because you know you understand how intimate it is to sing your hairstylist's chair uh, and they, they like it, it's a different type of connection because i know with my hairstylist when i sit in, in the chair he's like my therapist he's not right. just the person that does my hair so you right. you probably know him on a, a basis that no one else got to see i mean you know you know yeah i mean we, we talk about stuff and you know i try to give him advice when i can and you know i love him I, I, you know, support him. Still. I just see you got the, the big, the big sign that says. <laughs> well, we keep get, it because it's just I wouldn't throw it away. <laughs> good memories, good memories. Well, yeah, and he's my buddy, and I love him, and you know, I'm proud of him, and you know, despite everything that happens, you know, now it's just it's a life lesson. You know, we all make little funny choices that sometimes don't serve us the right way, and. That's how we learn from it. We, you know, we make the mistake and then we, we learn from it. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's so smart. He's a good kid. He has a good heart. So I always support him. You know. And me personally, I would never get into the details of the trial. And that's yeah, none no, of my. Not. That's none of my business. Right. But one thing I wanted to ask you, the last thing about six nine sure. was that. Let's say that if he would contact you to, to get his hair redone and while while he was in there uh, while he was in jail, would you get uh, would you do his hair for him? Absolutely, but it's not allowed to do it that mm-hmm. way. So that's but he says I'm the first person who's gonna see when he comes first out. person, first person. <laughs> and then what, what, the last time you saw him was before the the, the music video. Uh, we were in L. A. for Nicki Minaj and Kanye West video. So you've done a lot of traveling. Actually, no, it's not true. I saw him one more time after that. Yeah. 
but you've done you've done your fair share of traveling when it comes to doing hair and uh, yeah, you know, sometimes when I get any any favorite places that you've ever visited? My favorite place would probably be Israel or Greece. Where in Greece? I just got back from Greece. Oh, uh, we well, we were in Athens, and then I heard great things. I was in Santorini, my brother's wedding. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, there. it's incredible there. Amazing. The food, the animals, the, the sight, the sea, the, the, the sea, just like Mediterranean Sea or something like that. Um, we were in Athens, but we were staying like 40 minutes down the coast at yeah. like a resort there. And in Israel, I love Israel. It's kind of similar. Yeah. Similar to You got to make your way to Egypt. I, I definitely yeah. recommend it. If you, if you like these different yeah, areas. Yeah, I probably would. You would love Egypt. Okay. You would love Egypt. My okay. family my family's from Cairo. Oh, oh and all cool. That, so I definitely highly recommend I always tell people okay. that Egypt is like, it should be mandatory for somebody to okay. visit. Okay, I say that about Israel. Yeah? Yeah. Interesting. Because it's so funky, and I think not enough people like especially in America realize like they only hear the news just yeah, like you hear right. about Danny or anything else and we, we create a uh, you know a, a vision of what we think it is from the news yeah. not really being there you know so it's kind of like that like you hear about all the army and all the stuff that so you think ah Israel but once you go you're like oh you never want to come back yeah. people are so nice they're beautiful there you can pick almonds and Almonds. Yeah, yeah. You could just go walk anywhere, pick an almond, or pick an orange, or pick a grapefruit. Yeah. And it's just, oh, it's beautiful. How inspiring was it to to just step outside the country for a second and still be doing something that you love and your craft? I mean, you know. Like, did, do do you pull inspiration from from traveling? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess a little, you know, because whenever you're in a new environment, you feel a new vibe, you know, feel a different energy, but I didn't go to Greece to do hair, but I did hair in Israel. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, in Israel, if you come from New York, number one, you're already, like, golden for them. Yeah. They put you right in the front of the window begging you to stay. Like, yeah, you're rich as it can get if you're doing hair in Israel if you're from New York. Especially if you have, like, a reputation. Right. Like, a whole bit, but... I was just there doing a wedding, so it wasn't like... You're a big deal, though. You're a big deal. Wow, I don't know about that. I, I love the modesty. <laughs> but no, you, you're great at what you do. I've seen a lot of your work. Thank I rec you. highly recommend anybody that's watching this video, yeah, this conversation. I just like you. what I do, so... What? Uh, last thing. Sure. What ins inspiration... Uh, not inspiration. What advice would you give any young creator, not just in hair, right. any young creator that's watching this, what, what type of advice would you give them for somebody that's just starting, starting out? Starting out, well, it's just about not getting discouraged when things don't go right away the way you think they should, and just, you know, staying tenacious is important, and just staying on top of things, and keeping at things, and keep asking for, you know, more, and learning more, just to stay at it, because, you know, when we're when we're new at something, uh, oftentimes it just feels like we're not good at it, you know. And in real in reality, we just need more practice, you know. So a lot of times people give up before they get, you know, the right, you know, start. So I always tell people just to not, you know, don't let things discourage you because life will be discouraging. But you gotta just kind of get back up and and try more and try something new and you know keep. You know, you go until you find your best flow, you know, yeah. and that's the basic uh, best advice I could give is just keep at it. Yeah, keep and at stay it. Stay positive. Stay positive. You know. Brush your shoulders off. Brush your hair. No matter what happens, if there's some balayage on your shirt, wash that off. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I was in, you know, two really tragic accidents when oh, I was really yeah. young yeah. that could have taken me, you know, like fully, and I kind of always use that to get me up. Wow. You know, so it's like we either choose to stay down or get up. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's it's about getting up and showing up. They say know? in Philadelphia, I don't know if you're familiar with it, they say you either get down or you lay down. Okay, so that's a good Same thing. Same thing. You know, pretty much. Yeah. Just got to keep at it, you know. Not let, not let any, you know, salty people, mm -hmm. you know, discourage you or 
don't want anybody that uh, is being negative. Just yeah. kind of keep them out of your life yeah. and keep moving forward. 